Bobab Festival of Wood and Barrel Age Beer. And yes, the W is silent. It's a collection of beers from all around the country, really, at this point. That has spent any time in contact with wood. A festival that features beers that really take the brewer's time. Uh, they take the brewer's creativity. I mean, you literally have 180 beers in the room. Probably 160 of them are quite good. And maybe 140 or 150 are the first beer that you would order if you walked into a bar and saw that on the list. When you're marrying beer with a previously used barrel or, or fresh barrel, um, you're really getting this marriage of, of beer, possibly distilled spirits and wine, and wood. So you're really getting this, this three different um, flavor profiles all blended into one delicious beverage. Fobeb started, I was sitting around with Pete Crowley and Todd Ashman at Rock Bottom 10 years ago. We said, why don't these barrel-aged beers, we're drinking some of Pete's barrel-aged beers, why don't these have their own festival? So we decided to have it at, uh, upstairs at Rock Bottom, and we picked a Tuesday night. Um, it, happened, it happened to be April Fool's Day. And so a lot of uh, beer lovers looking at the internet thought it was just going to be an April Fool's joke. They're like, what, they're going to have 20 of these rare beers on tap all at once? Well, Bale Age in Chicago has a really rich history. Um, now, we'd like to say that we developed it. That's not really true. Um, people have been putting things in barrels for a yeah, <laughs> very yeah, long exactly, time. Yeah. You know, the, the important thing is Chicago's proximity to Kentucky, uh, that you, you have the production center for uh, bourbon is only about six hours away. Well, when you make bourbon, you can only use a barrel once. Bourbon barrels can literally only store bourbon once, and then they have to be destroyed or somehow be sold. You know, as far as we can tell historically, it was the brew pub at, at Goose that was the first brewery in the area and possibly the country to, to put um, stout in a bourbon barrel. That was with Bourbon County, uh, Bourbon County Stout, and that was batch 1000 at the brew pub over at Clybourne. And um, they started out doing it in uh, 100 days in bourbon barrels. And then as the craft brewing industry at the Chicagoland uh, in particular started to explode, you started seeing wine barrels, barley wines, different styles, different types of barrels. Um, so it's really grown into a pretty, pretty awesome uh, component of the craft brewing scene. With, with barrel aging and more importantly with blending, we're rediscovering an art that almost has been lost. <laughs> This is the birthplace of barrel-aged beer. It's really, really fun just because the brewers are out on the floor. They're all circulating. They're talking. They're tasting the beers, too. It, it's great that there's volunteers pouring the beers. There's people that know what they're talking about. But you're still there. You're talking with the brewers. You're, you're shoulder to shoulder with them. Um, you know, they're telling you what they're looking to go taste. I love Fobab because it's near and dear to my heart. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. And, uh, you know, to be able to create something that has roots in, in, in Louisville. And to do it in Chicago, where barrel-aged beer, you know, was born, it, it's special to me. You know, for me, I like the Elijah Craig 18-year-old bourbon barrels because that's the very first bourbon I had with my father. And every time I take a beer that I'm very proud of and, and let it age in a Elijah Craig 18, it's like 
it's a bonding moment. We've got a number of different styles uh, that people can enter, and basically we're looking for the beers that best combine the spirit that previously lived in, in the barrel. Uh, and the beer itself, and then the wood character. Judging is very similar to the judging that's done at Great American Beer Festival. Oh. It's not exactly the same. The Because it's wood and barrel-aged beers, the judging form is different. It asks the judge to comment about the flavors of the wood and how well they're integrated in with the other recipe, you know, with the rest of the recipe. And you're presented with a flight of beers, somewhere around eight beers, maybe 10 beers. And your your job as a table is to pick three that move forward to the next round. Sitting at the judges table when we were doing best of show and you've got 10 glasses of the gold medal winners in front of you and I don't know what they are, um, but going through and tasting those with some of the best palates in Chicago for sure, but your Randy Mosher, Lynn Kruger, Keith Lemke, and listening to what they're saying about these beers, it was just, it was a really amazing moment. It is time to announce the best of show for the 10th annual festival of wooden barrel aged beer. A small brewery from Chicago called Goose Island Beer Company. Cherry Rye Bourbon County Brand Stout. And they won last year too. You can't go to Siebel and they don't teach you how to do this. I know, I called and asked. Like, hey Keith, like, can you teach me how to, it's like, no. It's like, I'm like, fuck, like, we're in, we're in this, like, we're really messes, but I wanna learn from other people of what they do. And the reality is there's not that many people out there that do this. Everyone's trying to do this, we're rediscovering this as American craft brewers. And it's beautiful, it's a wonderful, it's an exciting thing. Um, but if you're looking for someone to teach you this, uh, basically, you have two options. Um, well, I guess you have three options. Uh, the first is to go and intern under Jean Van Roy at Cantillon. I tried to get Goose to pay me to do that. Uh, the second is go intern uh, for Armand at Du Fontaine. Um, I would have quit Goose to go do that. Um, and third is just figure it out as you go along. Um, and that's where we end. The aging process uh, for bourbon, and, and, and there's a bunch of curves involved in flavor profiles of what you get out of, out of the barrel when it comes to distilled spirits. Um, unless you give it at least four to six months, you really miss out on a lot of, like, it's called lignans and, and lactones, wood sugars, that create that coconut and that vanilla. Um, it takes time for the alcohol to pull that from the wood. Um, so that's why good bourbons after three years, four years, seven years, and, and the curve is just is after that three year mark, it just goes, shoots through the roof. And the same thing with beer, but the cool thing about pre-used barrels is you've already got some of that spirit in there that already has all that vanilla and coconut. But once you leave the beer in there and, and get the beer really saturated into the wood, it, it, it's kind of a more rapid aging process than bourbon. What a lot of people do is just, I have a beer that I really like, I can put it in a barrel and see what happens. That's cool, um, and some nice beers come out of it. But if this only you really get into heavily, you design beers in order to be barrel aged, in order to have the base beer become something different. And you look at the great Lombic places and they're gonna blend everything. And I think that's something that people learn. When you get into barrel aging, you go, I mean, I have this great beer and I'm gonna serve it today. And you do well with it. And you serve the next one, it doesn't do as good. And you go, why wasn't that? Why didn't that one taste as good? oh, because I, I may put the same word in 10 different barrels and may do it again next year and they never taste the same. And you understand how to take them and how things taste now and how they're gonna, even how they're gonna taste next year because you've been doing this so long. As time goes on and more and more breweries are doing these barrel programs, that some of the ones who are really gonna shine are the ones who learn to really blend well. Blending is all of it, all of it. Um, the only reason we're able to produce the beers on this volume and the scale uh, at, at this level is through blending. There's no one moment that defines any program. There's kind of all a great time you're seeing so many people there that you know you see a lot, but everyone's in one place and you can't walk 
five steps without being like, oh, hey, how's it going? Your beer's great. I went to the brewery yesterday or whatever. That's the thing I dig most is the people I run into. There's a, there's a lot of new players in the game. Um, we have a lot more breweries that are outside of Chicago, which is great. Um, and a lot of new breweries within Chicago, which is also great. So as a brewer, it's wonderful because you're being challenged in all different ways. And the quality is just keeps going up and up, you know, and that's, and that's why it's more competitive. I mean, obviously we brewers are all great friends, you know, and uh, we support one another, but we do have that competitive streak when it comes to some of this stuff. If you go out the Friday before Fobab, you go out to the bars and people are buzzing about it and there's brewers out there talking about it. Everybody wants to go to it. And I think it's, it's more, than just, more than just the beer of the people, it's this overall feeling that we all get. What makes this very unique is the people who are here, they know what this is all about. They really understand and appreciate the concept of wood and barrel aged beer. I was talking to a friend the other day at a beer event and he said, Where's the old brew? Where is the, you know, I never see this, the, the regulars anymore. And I said, this, this is the new regulars. Everyone around the country who knows this and that does this respects this festival and sends the best things they possibly can. Um, and then we get to drink it. And that's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, I wouldn't be anywhere else that day. When I was able to take a step back and look at the room with that, like I said, with the lighting and the, the wood, the lights were on in the, in the facility and the wood was well lit and just everything was just like firing on all cylinders. And that's what I knew. I'm like, this is Fobab. I think the future of barrel aging um, is going to mimic the future of craft beer as a whole. It's differentiation. It's, it's experimentation. It's, it's having an idea and expressing that idea. Because at the end of the day, that's what beer is. Beer is expressing an idea. It's why the event's so cool. We're just going to keep it awesome rare beers, small venue, not too big of crowds. I woke up Sunday, and I was like, man, I want to do that again today. If I could do that every day, if I go to Fobab every day for the rest of my life, I would have a short life. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be amazing. Well,